Today, we are doing a teardown of the Meta Ray-Ban smart glasses. We're going to analyze the manufacturing processes used to create them, put the glasses through a series of quality tests, and give them our DFM score out of 10. Let's get straight to it. Here is the Blue Jeans Wayfarer model. Stick around to the end to hear about our giveaway, but today we're going to be taking apart the black headliner model. You can see the split lines have been created in the assembly process. It's very hard to avoid these entirely, but Ray-Ban have done a pretty good job at keeping them at zero gap. First, we will take out both arms, which are fixed in with two screws, very similar to what you would see with your own reading glasses or sunglasses. So let's pop those out and let's see if we can try to get inside each of the arms and understand what technology is inside. The two halves of each arm have been glued together in a one-time assembly process, and I'm going to try to cut across them using a small blade so we can access the electronics inside. I'm really trying not to damage the electronics. Hopefully, we can get a nice clean cut on the top and the bottom side. Just using the spudger to lever it apart, and a little persuasion with the Stanley knife, trying very carefully not to cut my finger off at the same time. These arms are well stuck together and they've certainly done a good job in their design. The glue they've used is very strong. The other way to do this would be to use ultrasonic welding, which would have made it easier to open, but this process would not be as strong as glue. Eventually, I'm able to pull the arm apart, revealing the electronics, and it looks like we've got the switch, We've got the mainboard PCB, the speaker module, and something else that's connected to the speaker. It looks as though it could be to support the spatial audio. Then on the other side of the plastic, we have some electrical grounding and what looks like EMC shielding, and this is the power switch. On the outside of the frame, we've got the approval markings done by Tampo Printing. We also have a metal CNC part that looks like it channels the flex PCB from the arm to the frame connecting the camera. The switch has its own flex PCB and connector, and that connects to the mainboard PCB via a ZIF connector. And on the mainboard, there are also pogo pins. These pins are connecting the camera module to the mainboard. There are some small foam pads on the shielding can that ensure they do not come off when dropped. There's a dedicated cavity in the arm for the speaker module, and there's also a speaker membrane that sits inside the cavity. Here is another part to the speaker that's connected to what looks like it supports the spatial audio, or it could be a sensor. The main board is screwed onto the frame. It has two shielding cans and some other discrete components. And on top of the cans, there's a black thermal paste to distribute the heat. Under the main board, there is a very thin flex PCB that holds some of the small discrete components and sensors. Let's get these cans off the main board and see what's inside. Using the heat gun, both cans come off quite easily. It looks like there's a green thermal paste to distribute the heat more evenly across the processor and RAM. It's interesting to see they have used two different types of thermal paste. This could be due to cost and or thermal conductivity performance. Here you can see the new Snapdragon Gen 1 smart glass chip, as well as the onboard 32 gigabyte memory. We have another can on the other side of the mainboard PCB. Let's see if we can get that off. It's much bigger than the two on the other side. It took longer, but I managed to get it off eventually. Now for the second arm. Once open, we can see the right hand arm houses the battery. It has a similar configuration to the left arm with the same speaker configuration but we also have a flex PCB under the battery running all the way along the arm. Looks like this could be the Bluetooth and wireless antenna. It's sitting on an adhesive layer to keep it in place. There are some connections from this flex PCB to the frame, which will be for the LED light. And we have the same speaker design and cavity as we found on the left-hand arm. Inside the frame, we have a CNC aluminium part that was then screwed to the arm hinge. It also routes the flex PCB from the arm to the frame for the camera on the left hand side and the LED on the right. Yeah. 
that wasn't working. Let's get out the Dremel. You can see how the connection for the charge pins are located inside the frame. This is an overmold process, so therefore making it impossible to take it out of the frame. But what we can see is the microphone embedded into the right hand side of the nose piece. Cutting the frames in half will expose the contact of the charge pins from the nose piece through the frame. And again, on the other side, we have the metal insert that's housing the support for the LED light. Let's quickly tear down the charging case to see what's going on there. The case cover that holds the battery and PCB sub-assembly is very well secured inside the glasses and is quite an effort to get out. What we have inside is a support frame that's holding the mainboard PCB and the battery. There is a cylindrical battery that has a capacity of 3034 milliamps. It has a flying lead with a simple plug-in connector to the mainboard PCB and it looks like the battery protection circuit is inside the battery and it's also protected with some foam on the outside. We also have the flex PCB for the two charge pins that connect the smart glasses when placed into the glass case. And we can see a small micro switch which is pressed to get the charge status of the glasses. On the bottom of the mainboard PCB, there's a USB-C which is located on the underside of the case for charging. Let's take a look at the design for manufacture and analyze some of the manufacturing decisions made for these glasses. All the frames and the arms are made from plastic and these are self-molded, which means that they have no paint or post-processing cosmetic finishes. This keeps the cost down and also means there are less issues with quality with the paint fading away or being chipped when the glasses are dropped. We can also see that the cans for the mainboard PCB have slight recesses on the inside. This is to ensure that there are clearance gaps from the top of the chip to the underside of the can and this is very important to prevent shorting or damaging the main IC and memory chips. We also have a number of small flex PCBs at varying thicknesses. These are mainly used to maximize the internal space and root connectors and important sensors like proximity and light sensors for the glasses to fulfill the key functions. Inside the frames, we see EMC shielding to meet the CE and FCC requirements for wireless products. Where the arm meets the frame is a critical part as it needs to route the delicate flex PCB from the main board assembly through to the camera module assembly. We also have on the other side the same thing, connecting the battery to the light LED as well as powering the main board PCB on the other side of the glasses. It's very clever how they've used an insert molding process by creating a connection between the battery in the right hand arm all the way over to the main board PCB in the left. You also have the charge connections that are insert molded into the nose piece that is used to connect and charge when placed into the case. The battery is small enough to fit inside the right hand arm, which has a capacity of 154 milliamps, which is enough to power the smart glasses for up to four hours before needing recharge. This is a very interesting battery size that we can expect to see in future smart glasses as this sets the standard for powering smart glasses alongside the new Snapdragon AR1 chipset. The lenses are made from plastic and not glass, which I expect is due to cost and is usual for typical sunglasses. You can put in your own prescription lenses, which means you can use them indoors and then you would expect a much higher scratch resistance performance. We can now test the hardness of the different materials on the glasses using this durometer gauge, which records the hardness of plastics. This gives us an insight into the different grades of plastics used in a product. Let's take the hardness of the lenses and then the frame plastics and then the lens of the camera and finally on the insert for the nose pads. Here you can see the different durometer measurements according to the sure hardness scale. A cross hatch test is used to determine paint adhesion and level of plastic structural strength of injection molded parts. This is a scratch test that creates even cuts spread one to three millimeters apart. Here we are using a 10 tooth blade with a one millimeter gap. This is our reference sample of a painted surface. 
Now we do the crosshatch test on the plastic arm. There doesn't seem to be any flaking that has been removed from the crosshatch test, confirming that these are indeed self-moulded plastics. Now let's try the pencil test on the lenses. We start off with the H pencil. Then we use the 2H pencil, then the 4H pencil, and we can see the 4H scratches the lens. So the lenses have a scratch resistance rating of 3H, which is pretty good as most standard sunglasses have a 2H rating. Overall, I'm very impressed with how the architecture of these glasses have been worked out. They have managed to stay incredibly similar to the form factor of the original Ray-Ban glasses, which is a testament to their engineering. Meta have maximized almost 100% of the internal space, which is highly impressive considering the curvatures of the parts to follow the Ray-Ban form factor. The way the glasses are integrated with the charging case is also very smart and practical. For obvious reasons, these are not as robust as you would expect of other consumer electronics devices. But this is understandable considering we are only on the second iteration. They do not have any IPX rating for dust or water ingress, which is now the norm on all high-end smartphones. I expect this will come in the next iterations of smart glasses. Now with the Snapdragon AR chipset, these smart glasses are smaller, lighter and more power efficient than previous versions. I think these are a giant leap forward for smart glasses and they only see the next iterations being able to miniaturize even further. It would also be nice to see further technology development around the speaker technologies. Maybe you'll be able to remove them altogether and replace them with bone conduction type technologies, making the glasses even smaller and lighter. So for our quality and design for manufacturer score, we are giving it a solid eight out of 10. Very impressive from both Meta and Ray-Ban. We are going to give away this Blue Jean Wayfarer pair to one of you. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel and comment underneath this video with the words Blue Jean. And we will choose one of you to receive the glasses for free. If you enjoyed this video, then give it a like and let us know what other products you would like us to tear down. You can also see my product review of the Ray-Ban Meta glasses here. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.